This broken figurine arrived with a missing foot. This lesson is going to focus on how to create a new foot using uh, impression and resin casting. Once the missing foot is done, it needs to be cemented to the leg. Uh, given the very narrow cross section, epoxy would not be sufficient. Metal pin is required. I already inserted and cemented the metal pin to the upper part. I'll show you how it's done. The left foot is in good order. I would take an impression of that, even though it's uh, not in the same angle the way the step is shown. Uh, I would adjust that later and I'll show you how this adjustment is done. Um, the next step is to take this two-part silicone rubber and take an impression of the good foot, let it cure, and then cast it in resin epoxy to create the foot. After a few hours uh, to remove this uh, silicone rubber impression, uh, it's better to cut it in the back so it would come off easier. Use a blade as you see and uh, then I have to overcome that cut so the um, resin epoxy will not leak as we pour it so I use rubber band for that. To keep the mold straight out before I pour the resin epoxy I place it in uh, this bucket with uh, plastic pebbles then I use uh, two parts resin epoxy it's a high end it cures really hard it's 50-50 ratio. I use a scale for that. And then I have to mix really well. Uh, it cures fast. It cures in less than three minutes, but you have to mix it at least for 30 seconds. And you pour it slowly so it won't capture bubbles. I'm removing it from the mold. And then I would um, check it and see what it looks like as far as length and angle. See, it's too long and it's off angle, it's not straight. I'm gonna grind it off. See, the angle is off and I'm using hot water. The hot water works only if you do it within 15 minutes after you've taken off the mold. Uh, it still has some flexibility, otherwise it's too hard. So I'm taking advantage of the time and I'm bending it to be correct. I run it on the cold water to keep it the way I bent it. And then you can see all the legs are lined up in a straight line. It would sit straight. Then I'm drilling a hole to mate with the pin that is already on the upper part. And would cement it. It's two part epoxy. It's 39 PSI. It's PC clear epoxy. I apply it on both on the pin and on the foot and place it on a flat surface, making sure all feet touches the flat surface. I use PC11 as a filler epoxy. Um, I apply it on all joints and perhaps in perfection that the mold might have created where we cut it in the back. Let it cure, then I use uh, sandpaper, carbide sandpaper to 20 grit. And I sand until I don't see any defects and all the surfaces are continuous. Then I use 400 grit to make it smoother. And it's ready for painting. I use airbrush to match the colors. I start with the base color. And, uh, we have a whole tutorial about painting. I'm not going to talk too much about what I'm doing. Uh, it's a abbreviated version of the painting. There are more steps there. But this next one is how we create the, um, the, the dark spots that you see on the neck. Basically, we apply it after we've glazed it once and we rub it off and leave some leftover black if you may to show the spots and the stains to make it organic and the last step is um, of painting it's to get the right tint this is a little bit more ochre that is needed it's translucent ochre what i'm doing is i'm removing the latex which i didn't show that i applied earlier to protect uh, high value surfaces so i won't paint them where i don't need to 
And that's the last step. I use clear glaze. It's a cold glaze. And here it is. It's all done, ready to be shipped to a customer. Thank you for watching.